So it's the 11th of April 2016. Let's have a look at this week's market news. A little bit of a backdrop from um, overnight, really. Moderately positive data out of Japan uh, and China failed to stir the markets overnight. The dollar yen that we can see on the chart here rallied initially, uh, but the yen rebounded as strength in the currency continues to frustrate the Bank of Japan. No intervention yet, but the longer this run persists, the more likely it becomes. However, currency intervention can be tricky without looking like competitive devaluation. The BlackRock CEO warns on negative interest rates. No surprise, as we have voiced some concerns for some time here at TrendSignal, negative rates hardly inspires consumers to go out and spend. And if anything, they have to save a lot more in order to get their same return. So a little bit of a, a, a review uh, for the week. Dollar yen uh, falling 315 pips for the week. That's quite a big fall of 2.85%. You compare that with the likes of euro dollar, which is broadly unchanged for the week, and also sterling dollar, which was down around about a cent, about 0.8% or so for the week. So dollar yen definitely, or the yen, definitely the big mover for the week there. As for the indices, uh, we can certainly see Modest inclines really for the FTSE, up 44 pips, uh, points for the week there. Compare that with the indices, which were down really, the likes of the Dow, uh, down approximately 232 points, about 1.3% for the week. The S&Ps also down as well, around 1.25% for the week. And the DAX, about 202, uh, about 1.9% there. So equities broadly off um, where the FTSE kind of bucking that trend there. As for precious metals, the likes of gold, up around 18 bucks, around 1.6%. Uh, conversely, copper uh, taking quite a hammering uh, down about 3.8% for the week there. So despite certainty, uncertainty rather surrounding Brexit, UK equities were the standout market. Recovery in part due to resource sector, which ignored weakening base metals. The weaker pound, in part due to Brexit worries, also helping exporters. The resource sector was mixed, although crude oil rally on Friday helped bolster sentiment, although base metals continue to slide. The US dollar remained weak, as current slide may have more to come. All this despite satisfactory data. The yen continued its unrelenting rally, weakening the Nikkei as it did so as big exporters were hit. Sterling remained under pressure with manufacturing and trade data on Friday further undermining uh, the pound. As a look at for the data uh, for this week, inflation data out in the UK, Europe and the on Tuesday, Thursday and Friday respectively as the markets remain focused on the fight against deflation rather than any inflation. Manufacturing and industrial production data in the US on Friday will be watched very closely indeed with the University of Michigan consumer sentiment closing out the week's data where we expect a positive uptick from the previous month. For UK markets where sterling has suffered as the Brexit debate and approaching referendum dominate, we have our monthly policy meeting from the Bank of England. No change is expected, but traders are now more focused on the possibility of a rate cut here in the UK. So bear in mind the vote and how the MPC are voting uh, is uh, going to be very, very important rather than any potential rate change, which is unlikely. Earnings, well, it's the start of Q1 earnings uh, season this week as companies in the U.S. are expected to remain in a profit recession. So earnings of companies listed on the S&P 500 are expected to decline 8.1% to $26.17 per share in the first three months of the year from the same quarter in 2015, according to data compiled by the S&P Global Market Intelligence. The energy sector remains a big drag on earnings, not surprisingly, uh, but banks are also experiencing a drop in revenue. Alcoa is always one of the first to report. It kind of indicates the start of earnings season. JP Morgan, the biggest bank, uh, kicks off um, bank earnings on Wednesday and is projected to report a 6.1% drop in earnings per share from a year ago quarter. The weakness in trading business is expected to drag on the bottom line. 
Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and Delta Airlines are amongst the others in the total of 15 one five S&P 500 companies uh, that are reporting their results later this week. So have a good week's trading, and we'll be back with more uh, next week. All the best. Bye-bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.